Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to look at some modular arithmetic, how to find the residue, and in particular, how to use your calculator to find a remainder, which is how you simplify a modular expression. We have 54 plus 56, and we want to calculate that mod 6. We're going to complete our addition first, so we have 110 mod 6. Now remember, modular arithmetic is like clock arithmetic. We have a limited number of values before we start recycling through them. For example, in the case of mod 6, the only values we have are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Once we get to 6, 6 is congruent to 0, and we would start over again. Instead of writing 6, we would write 0. Instead of writing 7, we'd write 1. Instead of writing 8, we'd write 2. Instead of writing 9, we'd write 3, and so on, until we get to 11, which is congruent to 5, and then we would recycle back through. We would say that 0 is congruent to 6 mod 6. What we're trying to figure out now is, in mod 6, what is 110 congruent to? But we don't want to have to list out all the values from 17 to 110 to figure that out. So what we're going to do instead is recognize that when we divide a number by 6, the remainder, or residue as it's called in modular arithmetic, is going to be a number from this first list, 0 through 5, that it's congruent to. For example, the number 15 divided by 6 is 2 with a remainder of 3. And notice that 15 is equivalent to 3, or congruent to 3, in mod 6 arithmetic. So what we'd like to do is divide 110 by 6 and look for the remainder. Knowing how to do this on a calculator is particularly helpful when we have large numbers. I'm going to divide 110 by 6, but the calculator gives me a decimal, 18.3333333. Now in this case, you might actually know that 0.33333 repeating is equal to 1 third. Or in the case of a denominator of 6, 2 sixths. It's the numerator of that fraction, which is actually the remainder of the division problem. How do you do this with a decimal that's less familiar? Well, it's the decimal portion that we're interested in. So the first thing you're going to do with this quotient, with this result, is to subtract off the whole number part. We had 18.333, so I'm going to subtract 18. This leaves us with just the decimal part, 0.33333. Now remember, this represents a fraction of the 6 that we divided by. So what we're going to do is clear that denominator by multiplying by the 6. And what we see is we have a remainder of 2. Let's review those steps. 110 divided by 6 is equal to 18.3 repeating. Subtract 18, the whole number part, this gives you just the decimal, and multiply by 6. This gives you 2. So we know the remainder is 2. This confirms what we would find if we would divide 110 by 6 using long division. 6 goes into 11 once, 1 times 6 is 6. Subtracting leaves 5. Bring down the 0. 6 goes into 50 8 times. 6 times 8 is 48. Subtracting, we are left with a remainder of 2. Either way you work it, 110 mod 6 is congruent to 2 mod 6. Let's work one more problem. Let's look at 113 plus 47 mod 7. So first we're going to add 113 to 47. This is going to give us 160 mod 7. Next, we're going to go back to our calculator. 160 divided by 7 gives us 22 with a remainder. Let's get rid of the 22 by subtracting that whole number part. And now all we need to do is to multiply that decimal that's left by 7, and we get 6. This tells us that 160 divided by 7 would be equal to 22 with a remainder of 6. It's the remainder that's our residue in modular arithmetic. So 160 is congruent to 6 mod 7. 
By the way, this seems like a reasonable answer because in mod 7 arithmetic, the only values we can get when we've simplified completely are 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Then we would repeat back to 7 and so on. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it. And remember, I take requests. If you have any questions or would like to see another problem worked, you can always leave your request in the comments section.